Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Dr. Rick Wallace here uh, with the Visionetics Institute with another segment of Five Minutes of Fire. I hope that those who are watching this have gotten their um, week off to a good start. Uh, starting is extremely important. Starting your day, starting your week is extremely important. Uh, normally, uh, how you start your day is how your day is going to go. Um, uh, there's a saying saying that um, if you win the first hour of the day, you win the day. And that is immensely important. Um, I'm going to try to be as succinct and brief as I possibly can in addressing this issue. Uh, and I want to get a point home because it's extremely important. Before I forget, uh, due to popular demand, we've brought back the uh, rapid change uh, breakthrough sessions and the business breakthrough sessions. Uh, for those of you who want to take advantage of that promotion, the questionnaire is in the description box or the post box, depending on where you're watching this at. Simply fill out the brief questionnaire, email it to the email address listed, and the support team will get back with you to schedule your breakthrough session. Uh, look. If you're looking for a business breakthrough session, that questionnaire is not in there, but if you just simply email the uh, a request for the questionnaire to the email address uh, email address listed, uh, we'll get that to you ASAP uh, so that you can complete it and get it back. Um, anyway, let's talk. It's kind of funny um, with this idea of compressed time that I want to talk to you about, the importance of having the ability to compress time, to shorten learning curves and i learned this lesson early in life before i ever really had uh, a clue of the direction i was going to take in life i learned this lesson it's one of the most powerful lessons it's why i do what i do and it's how i've done what i've done it, it's kind of funny but my my grandmother would tell me something right i was uh, those who don't know me i was reared by my great grandparents my grandmother's parents and the wisdom that came with that is unbelievable. Some of the uh, wisdom that can come from simply living life uh, at a time that they lived it and the ability to overcome the obstacles to do some things. My grandmother owned her own business. My grandfather uh, was a master welder for one of the largest all rig build, uh, builders um, in the world and then retired to start his own business. So right around the time they took me as a baby and adopted me, they were, you know, pretty much business owners. So the, the idea of owning my own business came naturally. But anyway, that was something my grandmother would do. She would tell me to do something and it wouldn't be in a direct demand. It would be like, you know, you probably don't want to do this. You probably want to do this because if you do this, this is what's likely going to happen. And she would give it all out to me. And then she will come back through and I will be doing the total opposite of what she just advised me that I should do because I'm naturally a renegade. I'm going to go left if you tell me to go right because that's just me. I don't want to be told what to do. And I had to learn how to manage that over time. But anyway, she would tell me that. And then she will come back and see me doing the opposite. And her response is what I want to talk to you about. She would say, sometimes bought sense is better than borrowed, son. And what was she saying? She was saying that you have bought sense and borrowed sense. Bought sense is when you have to go through the experience yourself. Bought sense is when you have to learn the lesson on your own, when you have to go through trial and error, get knocked down, get pushed around, learn from your mistakes. That's bought sense. Then there's borrowed sense. Borrowed sense is when you run into someone else who's experienced it or knows the answer and they give it to you and you literally don't have to go through years of learning it. You can get it in a very short period of time. This is what I call compressed time. When you're able to compress the time based on being able to borrow the sense or the experience, you know, uh, from someone else who's gone through it, someone else who may have spent an entire lifetime learning a lesson that you can learn in a day or a week or two or three months or whatever. And uh, that's the thing, though. We live in a world in which taking borrowed sense is frowned upon by a certain group, not everyone, because some people out there are actually uh, using it to the, to, to the best of their ability. 
Uh, but you'll find a lot of people who ridicule uh, coaching. Now, I can understand to a certain extent because the coaching industry doesn't have a set standard. Uh, anybody can be a coach. Anybody can be a, a life change expert. Anybody can do anything. You take a couple of classes or just declare yourself to be one. And, you know, you're out there and you're doing that. My thing is, if, 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 if a person's getting results, if a person is literally getting results, if a person shows that they've, earned, they've gotten results at some point in their life doing something, then they have something valuable. And it's not always in paying someone. There's a person that'll pass by you and they've lived it before and they'll tell you. It's your responsibility to at least anatomize, break down and examine uh, the the, 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 the validity of what they're sharing with you. But we live in a world where a lot of people will tell you, man, that's stupid. Who's going to sit up and pay for a coach? But the thing is, if you really actually take the time to study the effects of working with a qualified and reputable life change expert, uh, achievement expert, life coach, whatever you want to call them, different things um, and in different levels and different, you know, different disciplines, uh, all around, but you know, you got life strategies, business strategies, all these different forms of showing someone or training someone how to get more out of themselves. And you can call it where you want to call it. But at the end of the day, you got these people. And what I did is in the process of grooming myself over the years, I've looked at the effectiveness of the world in which I'm operating in, which is a world of not I don't see myself as a motivator, even though I've been booked to speak um, what people thought were motivational speech, speak it, uh, speaker, speeches. What I am is someone who shows you how to activate something that's already there, how to get it started, how to view it, how to address the psychology of success, how to look at the strategy of success, how to change your state of being, three things that are essential to being successful. I show you how to do that. But I looked at the people who in the industry were the most successful. Uh, I started out with the first person that I came in contact with that he introduced me to that world, Earl Nightingale. Used to listen to him on um, on LPs, literally, on what my mom called the Vic Troller. You got to be kind of old to know what that is. And then it was called a record player, and then it went to a turntable, and now they don't even have them anymore because they you know, outdated the thing that followed, which is the eight track tape, the cassette tape, the CD. Now it's just digital, just download it or you stream it. But anyway, I used to listen to these LPs, which is literally a vinyl album and of Earl Nightingale. And then after Earl Nightingale, it was Bob Proctor, Bob Proctor, Jim Rohn, uh, Zig Ziglar, uh, on down the line, Les Brown came along, then Tony Robbins, then all these people. And the one thing that I noticed is every last one of them had a life coach. Wasn't called a life coach back then. That's relatively new, a few, you know, a couple of decades ago. Um, not going to talk about where it came from, but I know. But anyway, but these people who were considered success gurus, who were motivating people and teaching corporate classes and traveling around the world and being paid a lot of money for an hour and a half to two hours, literally had somebody that they were working with to help groom them, that could help sharpen them, and that's like. When you want to do something, you find a person that's already done it or a person that has the blueprint and you connect with them, You a person who has the experience, you connect with them. And then what do they do? They shorten the learning curve. You can literally take something that took 30 years for a person to learn or at the very, at the very, at the very minimum, it took them four years to six years of academic study to gain the expertise or the basic fundamental uh, principles of it. And you can get that in a couple of weeks, a few weeks, maybe 90 days or something. And it took them years. And here you are with it. Now you're running with it. It's still, you've got to add some application to it. So you've got to kind of take what you've learned and put it into motion. But you've You've, you've avoided the trial and error part of it. Now, my grandmother said, like, you know, son, son you're going to do a lot better when you learn to borrow more sense than you buy. Now, some things in life, you're going to have to buy it because you're not going to have somebody readily, readily available to loan it to you. So you're going to have to buy it. You're going to have to go out and experience it in life. And, and, and there's something to be said for bought sense, something to be said for having gone through it on your own. Because, see, that's something that you're going to carry in value that you're going to pass on to somebody else later on in life as something that you actually bought. Now, you, you, you want to look at this and really understand the importance of it because compressing time is going to expedite your journey. 
it's going to move you along faster to where you're trying to get. A lot of you are bumping your heads and running into things because you don't want to tap into one. You don't want to admit you don't know. You don't want to admit that you need help. You bought into that lie of the self-made, whatever, self-made entrepreneur, self-made millionaire, self-made whatever, and you don't understand that nobody is self-made. We are designed to tap into one another. We're designed to feed off of the positive energy of one another. We're designed to come in and become a conglomerate force of, of, of synergy and power that produces results. We work better when we work together and when we're able to tap into one another. But we also have to have the understanding of who we are at a level that when we meet a group of people or come in contact with a certain group that does not support our vision, does not believe in our vision, does not underwrite or ride with us in, our, in the journey of our vision, we still don't lose focus or lose confidence in where we're going. But what the, the, what the, funny, the funny thing about it is, though, what I've learned is that when you tap into who you really are and you decide to become not what someone else wants you to be, not what someone else says you should be, uh, not what people uh, believe you're capable of, but what your heart is telling you you were designed to do. And when you're committed to it, the thing is the energy that you start to emit based on the confidence of the beliefs in yourself. In other words, you've got to believe in you. You've got to believe in your design. You've got to believe in your destiny. You've got to believe in your purpose. And when you start to believe in those things, that energy you emit will begin to resonate with other people who think like you, other people who have done what you're trying to do, other people who believe in themselves at the same level. And that energy will resonate. Resonation is simply saying what, it, what you attract and what you're drawn to. Like energy resonates. It, you, energy attracts like energy. It resonates. You are not going to be in a consistent state of negativity, a consistent state of anxiety, a consistent state of worry, a consistent state of, state of frustration, bitterness, envy, jealousy, and attract positive results on a regular basis or have positive people around you on a regular basis. You're going to look around you and you're going to have a bunch of other Cynical people, negative people, people talking down on other people. You're going to find that. You're going to find that you have a lot of people around you that are harboring a negative uh, frequency or are emitting a negative frequency. And you are wondering why you can't get any ground. It's because, first and foremost, you haven't totally identified with who you are to the point of committing to it and believing in it in a level that starts to emit a high frequency, a frequency that will attract high frequencies and create high vibrations and create the power, literally move the universe on your behalf. I'm talking about in uh, operating in a level of consciousness of oneself that your energy you emit moves upon the consciousness of the universe, causing it to conspire on your behalf and bring to you the things that you desire. You can call it in, in, in its most simplified form, faith. But if you don't act on it, if you don't act on it with a certain sense of, or a particular sense of certainty, then it doesn't come to you. If you're sitting around and you spend more time worried, anxious, frustrated, that comes from doubt. Doubt is the antithesis of faith. And if you don't have an understanding of what's causing it or why you're doing it, then you need to figure that out. If you don't have the answer, you need to find somebody who does. This is not about, don't let your pride rob you of precious time that you could be living the life that you desire. So ultimately, it's your responsibility to compress time. It's your responsibility to find those in your periphery, in your life, or within your reach, or those you have access to who can compress time. And that means by loaning you their experiences, loaning you their wisdom, loaning you their knowledge. It's about finding the ones who have gone through it. And at the end of the day, when you are able to borrow more time than you have, I mean, borrow more sense than you have to buy, you're gonna find that you're expediting your journey, that you are speeding up the process that leads to the promise of your design, of your potential, of your destiny. And that's what you're here for, is to live at the full potential, to actualize the full potential 
of your design. And with that being said, I'm hoping I'm leaving you with something. Look, you got to take steps. You got to make something happen. You've got to take the reins of your life. You've got to assume sovereignty in your life. You've got to stop pointing the finger, placing blame, offering up excuses, giving reasons why it doesn't work, and start to sit up and say, I'm living out the results of my intent and my expectations, and that I must change my intent, I must change my expectations, and I must act upon it with a ferocious intensity that demands that the universe bow and, and, and go through life that way. You've got to be willing to take on life with an intent of achieving the things you want at all costs. And with that being said, I'm gonna step off of your look. Like I said, uh, those of you who wanna take advantage of the uh, rapid change breakthrough sessions, the business breakthrough sessions, uh, the information is in the uh, description box if you're on YouTube, or in the post box if you're on Facebook, um, and it's somewhere on the page if you're on the website, wherever you're at. Look, make your life count. You're not just here to buy time or pass time in this life. You're not here to just survive. You are here to thrive, to be a representation of possibility for those who are looking for inspiration. And then you get it, you pass it on. That's what this is about. This is about elevating the lives and the, the environment of people in your periphery, in your world, those who are around you. You have a responsibility to yourself, to your creator, to your design to do just that. So step up and do it. Like I've always said, I'm, I live every day of my life on full. I try to live every second on full. I try to make every second have a purpose, have a meaning. And I try to live it on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. That's my challenge to you, is that when you leave this place, don't leave anything undone. Don't leave one phone call unmade, one book unwritten, one lecture unspoken, one class unfinished, uh, uh, one, one, one trip un, uh, uh, not taken. Whatever the situation is, live life. Live it. Don't survive life. Live it. Live it. That's what I, that's my challenge. And so I'm going to leave you with that. You guys have an unbelievable and awesome day. I hope to be hearing from some of you guys and working with some of you guys. Some of you guys that I say, oh, yeah, I've already worked with. And I see you kind of doing your things. Uh, Tia, I see you. Uh, and keep doing what you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing what you have um, coming out in uh, for Mother's Day uh, as far as shirts. And I see, uh, wow, uh, a couple of people. Uh, look, you guys are exceptional. And the only thing that has kept you at bay in life is that you've bought the lie of those in your periphery or the social conditioning in which you exist, that you are not who you are. And you've been trying to walk out and live the description of that you've been given of yourself. It's time to discover who you are. It's time to discover the exceptional and remarkable capacity you have to perform remarkable, exceptional, and phenomenal things in this life on a consistent basis. It's time for you to discover that being average is not your lot in life, that mediocrity, it, it, it does not have some lock on you, that when you decide to do something exceptional and you commit to it, and before you even know how you're already moving toward it, the universe has to bow to your demands. Life will have to pay the price you demand of it. Life will have to sit up and say, you know what? I have to surrender that which you've demanded of me because your, 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 your sense of confidence, your sense of faith, the energy you're emitting, the frequency that you're emitting on a consistent basis demand that I conspire with you to bring you the things that you demand. I can't withhold it. I don't have the authority to withhold anything from you that you rightfully demand and hold fast to. Don't let disappointment, delay, frustration, none of that stuff knock you off or deter you from going after what you want. Stop worrying about what people are thinking about you. Stop worrying about what people are saying. Definitely stop worrying about failure. Failure is one of the greatest teachers I've ever had. 
I can't, I can't tell you enough. There has never been a failure that didn't bring feedback to why I needed to do something differently or what I needed to do. It's always about feedback. Failure is not to destroy you. Failure is not going to tear you down. Failure gets you closer to what you're trying to accomplish when you are fixed on it and you know where you're going. When you have your eyes fixed on your destination and it's not so caught up in, in, in the path, you are able to make the necessary adjustments along the path that get you to the destination. Too many of you are fixed on the path. So when the path doesn't work, you give up on the destination, recalibrate, set another destination. That's why you start and stop so many things and never finish anything because you're not fixed on the de de destination. You're fixed on the path because at the moment the path seems easy, it seems doable. And then the moment that difficulty sets in, you drop it and run to something else that's a little easier and find out later on down the line that it has its level of difficulty also and you just keep moving around. Find the destination. Make sure it's a destination that's so important to you that you don't want to let it go. Because when you get fixed on the definition, when the obstacle drops, you're either going to go around it, go through it, go over it, or work a, work, work a new solution. But the destination will remain the same. You don't get to the destination in a straight line. You get to the destination by making the adjustments along the way that you need to make to achieve what you need to achieve. It's not how smart you are. It's not how many people you know. It's not how much money you have in your bank account. It's how committed you are to going the distance. It's that simple. Exactly. Exactly. Failure definitely helps you. It, it, it helps you refine. It's a refining process. Failure is just a part of growth. It gets you to where you need to be. And if you stop fearing it and start engaging it, you will be surprised at what happens. Fail, learn to fail forward. That's what my mentor always told me. He said, man, you that's just you're gonna do some crazy stuff in life because you have no problem with failing forward. And all that means is I set these crazy goals that nobody believes I meet. And the first time I try, I don't get there, but I'm literally miles ahead of where I was when I first attempted it. And then I keep attempting and keep attempting. And then at some point, I get past the goal and I move on to the next one. Didn't reach it in the time I set, but that's okay. What I do by overextending myself that way is I make sure I never leave anything on the field. I never leave anything untapped. See, if I start setting my goals for things I know I can achieve, I always I may get it done, but then I never know what I could have got, what more I could have gotten out of it because I didn't push myself. I rather push myself and have people look at me and say, he said he was gonna do it by this time, but he didn't. But while you're watching me, I'm moving. And that's all that matters to me is every day I wake up and I'm progressing. That's what I celebrate in my life. Not the things I have, not the not the, the benchmarks I've reached, but the progression I make every day. Am I growing as a person every day? Am I getting better as a person every day? All the other stuff will take care of itself. If you make an intent to grow, you will be better in your marriage. If you make an intent to grow, you'll be better at parenting. If you make an attempt to grow, you will improve your finances. If you make an attempt to grow, you will become a better business owner. If you make an attempt to grow as a person, all of the other things will start to fall in line. If it's something that you need to get done and you're not getting it done, it's because you're not who you need to be to do it. Work on you and all this other stuff will change. With that being said, I've got to get out of here. I absolutely um, love having the opportunity to share with you guys. Uh, make something happen today. I don't care what it is. I don't care how big or how small it is. Come up with something. Think of something that you know needs to be done. Make it a point to get it done above and above uh, and beyond all else. Make it make it your point. Get it done and then do that every day. But I, I, I try to do three things. Now, I've got 100 things on my to do list, but I've got three things that absolutely has to get done today. And tomorrow it might be something totally different. But it's in sitting up and saying what things are really most important. to me. And sometimes it won't be directly attached to the vision of the dream I have. Sometimes it may be something that my wife needs, or it may be something that one of the kids needs, but what, whatever it is, it's something that's important, and I get it done, and, and that's progression. And I celebrate it. You know, I don't run around patting myself on the back, but I, I, I celebrate it. I give myself permission to feel good about getting something done. That's why I'm never down and depressed uh, for any type of period of time, because 
I'm always celebrating something. I'm always looking for a reason to be grateful. I'm always looking at the positive side of things. I'm always looking and saying, hey, man, you had a great day. It was tough, but you had a great day. And I wake up the next morning and I tell myself, you're going to have an awesome day. I prime myself first hour. Win the first hour, you win the day. You guys have a great day. Uh, again, make something happen. I'm out. Peace.